Good morning, friends. I hope you're doing well this morning. Uh, today we have the absolute privilege of reading one of the most joyous psalms in Scripture. As we continue this journey of ascent to Jerusalem, here the psalmist invites us to celebrate something that um, I think the people of Israel understood and uh, that we don't. That there's a context here to this psalm, but it's this moment where they're remembering how the Lord has rescued them. How there's this story that's just part of their consciousness that we're not quite sure which one it is, but where they are just celebrating because God has freed captives and returned them to Jerusalem. And there's this moment of celebration here that uh, this every pilgrim is invited into as they remember it. Because in this moment of celebration, they remember God's faithfulness. So now let's read this one together and let its words soak into our hearts and minds as we begin our time of worship today. Psalm 126 begins, a song of ascent. When the Lord brought back the captives to Zion, we were like men who dreamed. Our mouths were filled with laughter, our tongues with songs of joy. Then it was said among the nations, the Lord has done great things for them. The Lord has done great things for us, and we are filled with joy. Restore our fortunes, O Lord, like streams in Negev. Those who sow in tears will reap with songs of joy. He who goes out weeping, carrying seed to sow, will return with songs of joy, carrying sheaves with him. So here's this, that's the whole psalm. This beautiful psalm remembers, like I said, a period where God rescued or where God healed the people of Israel. Maybe he defended them from an attack. Maybe he brought them whatever... But there's this moment where it's very clear that God has done this profound work of jubilation. He has restored them out of captivity into hope. And so here you have this beautiful thing that's happened. And they are unbelieving that it could even happen. They are like men who dreamed. They go, I can't believe it. Is this real? Pinch me. Somebody pinch me. They're joyous. They're celebrating. The nations look on. Everybody's just in awe of God's grace and his rescue of them. And it describes the nature of that rescue in verse 4. The nature of this rescue is this beautiful... So Negev was a desert. And it was a desert that was incredibly dry and parched and ugly. And he says, well, look, imagine what would happen if streams or when a rain time, when the rainy season comes, when streams move through the Negev. It goes from being just dirt and rocks. It's transformed almost overnight into a place full of flowers and full of animals. A place where life is jubilant instead of life being destroyed. And he says this is what it's like to be in the presence of the Lord. This is what it's like to have been restored by God. Those who sow in tears will reap songs of joy. Those who go out weeping, carrying seed to sow, will return with songs of joy, carrying sheaves with them. So those who carry their sorrows with them as they go out are returning, carrying wheat, carrying the fruits of their labors, the fruits of their, their um, sorrow. And so all of this takes us as Christians right back to the, um, the Sermon on the Mount, uh, where Jesus says that um, blessed are those who weep. Um, because the Lord's the one who restores them. And that's the hope that we walk in as well. Christ has done this work for us. Christ has restored us. Christ has given us the freedom that we have to enjoy the gospel, to rest in the gospel, and to rejoice in his work moving us forward. Christ has loved us with a never-ending, never-failing love. And Christ chose us in our death sentence and restored us to new hope and new life in him. So this psalm is the Christian psalm. It's the Christian story. And even at the same time, in the midst of the sorrows that we're going through today, this story isn't complete. And we can anticipate it like these pilgrims are. These pilgrims are remembering this moment on the journey. Perhaps they sang this psalm as they were walking through a dry desert place. Perhaps they sang this psalm as they were walking up a south-facing stretch of mountainside with a steep incline going, Oh, remember that. Perhaps it was when they walked through a spring and they felt the refreshment 
of water and the cool air around it. But these pilgrims, as they sang this, so too we are reminded in our journey that this is just part of the journey. There are times when you weep and mourn. There are times when you will be in despair. There are times where you will feel like you are a captive. But the Lord has a plan that will free us. And the Lord has freed us and will free us and will bless us. We will be like the Negev, full of life. So uh, also, I mean, as we're playing with this metaphor, the other thing that comes to mind is uh, that whole idea that a seed has to die before it bears fruit, that it has to be buried. So that, that's, um, that's the Christian life. We're putting to death um, the things of the flesh, the th values of the world. We're setting aside the things that we would think would bring us joy, trusting God to bring us a greater joy. And this psalm anticipates that. So for you, I'd invite you to go read this again. Think about it. What does it look like for you? Where are you in uh, the desert right now? And what would it look like for God to show you and restore you to new life? Now remember with that, God frequently does things his way. We might think that God's going to restore us to life, to, to grant us healing in one particular way, but his plan is frequently a little bit different. So it, it's almost more important just to say, I trust God to do it than to plan how God's going to do it. Well, today, um, let's trust the Lord as we pray together. Father, thank you so much for your love. Thank you for the way that you have restored us, that we who were dry have been given living water that flows up within us that will never cease. That your spirit and your power dwell within us. That we are called your children. That we are united as one people. We praise you, Father, that even the sorrows that we face, even the despair and the suffering that comes to us in this life, it is for a glorious purpose and part of your great and beautiful plan. May we walk in confidence in that. Give us the strength and the faith to walk in confidence when we face those times. Father, we uh, lift up those who are facing those times today, those who are really suffering and hurting, those who are feeling great sorrow or facing death, those who are in the battle with cancer or the battle with depression. We pray for your mercy and your power and your grace and your love. We pray, Father, that you would surround them with your spirit, shower them with um, your comfort. And, Father, we pray for those who are facing difficult times right now. May your peace be with them. Lord, we pray that we would go out as a stream in the Gev, that your love flowing through us would take us out and the living water of the King of Kings would flow from our mouths, from our hearts, and from our hands, and that we would be healing to the nations and bring hope to those around us that are broken. We pray, Father, that um, we would have we would put to death the things of the flesh that keep us from doing that so that we can um, bring life to our broken city and our broken world. We thank you, Father, for your love and for your plan and for that day that we look forward to when everything will be made new. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, friends, thank you so much for joining me this morning. I hope you have a blessed and beautiful day. Bye-bye.